So you want to make a burnout scene in Blender? Strap in, cause here we go. The following settings are based on a scene in which the scale of the car and the environment are realistic. If the scale of your scene is different, you may have to make changes to what you are about to see. Step 1. Create the smoke emitter objects. Create a simple cylinder with no end caps, 64 faces, and rotate it to match the orientation of the tires. Scale it to fit inside the tire. Duplicate it in the edit mode and place the duplicate inside the other tire. In object mode, use Ctrl A to set the scale and rotation, and then set the origin to geometry, and parent it to the tires. From the object menu, select Quick Effects Smoke. That will create a domain for you. Resize the domain to fit your scene. It should encompass the total area you want the smoke to be in. You don't need to reset the scale of the domain though. Leave that alone and it will work just fine. Set the bottom of the domain just below the ground plane in your scene. That should prevent any Z fighting between the domain surface and the ground plane while providing a somewhat accurate surface for the smoke to collide with later when we turn border collisions on in the domain settings. Step 2. Set the following emitter values. Initial temperature to 10. Density we're going to set keyframes for. So it starts at 0, and then once our tire has been spinning for a second and has heated up, then the density goes up to 1. And then near the end of our animation, when the tire stops spinning and starts to cool down, the density goes from 1 back to 0. Under Flow Source, we want to check the box Is Planar, since our mesh is just that, planar. Another term for that is Non-Manifold. And then bring the surface emission down to 1, since we want our smoke to emit right from the surface of the tire, not farther out from the surface. Check the box for initial velocity, and then set the source velocity to 0.5, since we don't want the smoke to spin the exact same speed as the tire. Instead, we want the smoke to spin around and look as if it is pulled by the turbulent forces created by the spinning tire. Then we're going to give a 5 meters per second value in the positive Y direction, so that it looks like the tire is also spitting this smoke out behind the vehicle. The positive Y direction works for the scene I've set up here, but you may have to adjust this to fit your scene. And I got sick. And a pony! Yeah, I got bronchitis. <laughs> Ain't nobody got time for that. And now... Bye, wife. Step 3. Set the following domain values. Here's a helpful hint before we start setting values in the domain. Drag open a new window next to the 3D viewport, and then in the drop-down change it to properties. Then, with the domain selected in the outliner, click on the physics tab, and then click the little thumbtack icon in the upper right to pin this window. Now you can click on your smoke emitter, and its settings will be visible at the same time as your domain settings, making it much easier to tweak settings in both simultaneously. 
Now in the domain settings, we're going to check the box for bottom border collisions. This does exactly what it sounds like. Then check the box for adaptive domain. We'll come back to this later to set additional values within the adaptive domain settings. Under gas, set buoyancy density and heat to minus five. This will prevent our smoke from rising up too fast. If you check reference videos of burnouts, you'll notice tire smoke tends to hang in the air, not rise quickly like fire smoke. So along with our initial temperature differential of 10 that we set in the emitter values, these two settings will achieve our desired look. Then we'll set vorticity to 0.035. Vorticity is a very touchy value. Making small changes to it has a big impact on the movement of the smoke. Now check the box for noise, and if you want to start to see what this is looking like, you can leave the type under the cache settings set to replay and simply press the play button on the timeline. This only works if playback sync is set to play every frame though. If it is set to frame dropping or sync to audio, it will not generate a smoke sim when the timeline is played. Also under cache, set the end frame to match the point in your animation when you want the smoke to end. Now up near the top of the domain settings, a value of 32 resolution divisions is probably not going to look very good, but you will be able to see something happening in the viewport relatively quickly when you play the timeline, and that's cool for at least knowing that it's working. You can tweak settings and iterate on your sim and see what's changing. Keep in mind though that you'll have to change the value of the resolution divisions to get the sim to recalculate the cache. You could just change it from 32 to 30 and then back to 32 again, for example. Or you could bump it up to 64 and see how it's starting to improve with a higher resolution and the tweaks you've made. Now let's go back to the adaptive domain settings and give the add resolution a value of 1. Increase the margin to 6 and lower the threshold to 0.01. This will help our smoke look better and help prevent our smoke from colliding with the domain border prematurely. Under the noise settings, we'll reduce the strength to 0.5, increase the scale to 2.5, and increase the time to 0.2. Under the cache settings, in the advanced section, we'll change precision volumes to full. This will take more CPU power but should result in a better looking smoke sim. I'm back. Part four, turbulence and materials. Before we get started adding turbulence and tweaking the smoke material, Let's go into the domain settings and check the box for dissolve. Then click the drop down to open the dissolve settings and leave the slow box checked and set the time value to 60. That should make our tire smoke hang around just long enough before dissipating. Of course, as you get comfortable with this process, you can change this value to your liking, as with most all the other settings you've seen here today. Now, as long as your cache type is set to replay, and your playback sync is set to play every frame, you can go ahead and press play in the timeline and see how your sim is looking so far. This extra little window I have showing my camera angle in the 3D viewport gives me a peek at how this will look in the final render while I can use my large main 3D viewport window to work in from any angle. I have my frame range set to 300 right now, which isn't that important during a replay simulation, but will be helpful when we do early bakes so we don't waste time baking the entire simulation while still trying to iterate and make tweaks to our settings. Hopefully at this point you see that you're getting somewhere, and your sim is moving in the right direction. It probably won't look ideal quite yet, and that's okay. We're in the final stages of setting things up, but we're not finished yet. Another benefit of this smaller window down here is that it will render faster when I change from viewport shading to render preview, especially if you don't have a high-powered PC. 
So the shape of our smoke is looking a little too uniform and is not currently simulating the turbulent forces of air created around the back of the vehicle. We can fix this by adding a force field turbulence. We can raise this turbulence off the ground slightly and then adjust its settings. We'll lower the strength to 0.5, increase the size to 1, and then leave everything else alone. You can change the seed value to any random number you like. It'll just create a slightly different variation of the turbulence depending on the seed number. Now you can play your sim again and see how the turbulence affects your smoke and then make any changes you like. If it's not affecting the smoke enough, try raising the strength of the turbulence a little bit at a time. Our domain is set to 128 resolution divisions right now, but ultimately we'll shoot for 256. So we don't expect it to look too good right now, but we don't want to set at higher than our PC can reasonably handle in a short amount of time. That's one of the biggest challenges in creating a smoke sim, finding the balance in the time it takes to generate between iterations. If it takes too long to generate, it can really suck the wind out of your sails and it might make you give up on the whole thing entirely. Finding an efficient way to iterate will make you much happier throughout this admittedly challenging process. The key is to change only one value at a time and keep the generation time low so you can quickly see what the impact of that one change is and to avoid changing more than one value at a time so you don't get confused what setting had the positive or negative impact on your sim that you're witnessing in the current generation. Now let's head over to our shading workspace and adjust the look of this smoke. Back when we used the quick effects smoke command on our smoke emitter objects, Blender was nice enough to create a domain and material for us. The default settings on that material are okay, but you can tweak them in the principled volume shader to get just the look you want. For starters, let's affect the color of the smoke, as the default is kind of a dusty gray. Entire smoke is whiter with sometimes just a hint of blue in it. We can easily achieve this by adding a color ramp and plugging it into the principled volume shader's color input. Then we change the black slider to a light blue and adjust the position of both sliders until we get the look that we're going for. We can also change the density right in the principled volume shader and have a big impact on the appearance of our smoke. To see this, go ahead and change the density to a value of 1, and notice how thin the smoke looks. If you remember in our smoke emitter values, we animated the density to go from 0 to 1 and back to 0, and that's perfect for the smoke emitter. Now we can change the look of that density in our principled volume shader. This is much better than trying to achieve this whole thing in just the smoke emitter's density value alone. Now bump it up to something like 50 and notice the huge difference. And all this without having to regenerate our smoke sim. The information is already there. We're just affecting how the density is rendered. Very cool. I like a setting of 10, but as always, you do what you like best for your sim. Now let's change the cache type to modular and start getting ready for our final bake. Home stretch. We can hit the Bake Data button, and Blender will bake all the data for the frame range you have set. In my case, it is 300 frames worth of data. That should bake relatively quickly. Now the noise is baked out separately because we are using a modular cache type, which gives you more flexibility in the baking process. If it were set to all, it would bake the smoke and noise at the same time which will take longer and won't allow you to change the noise independently of the main data without rebaking both again. Here's something that might mess you up though. If you have the noise checkbox checked and you haven't baked the noise yet, you won't see any smoke in the 3D viewport after baking the main sim data. That can lead to many frustrating minutes of wondering why your smoke is not showing up. If you simply uncheck that box, then the sim generated by your main data will instantly show up in the viewport. Now you can recheck that box and then bake the noise of your smoke sim. Now when you play it back, you can see the impact that the noise is having on the sim as a whole. A little render preview in our mini window will also give us a quick idea of how it's looking when it's rendered. 
The benefit of this separate noise bake is that you free the noise and then make a change and then rebake just the noise portion and have a nice effect on your sim without rebaking the main data. I'm going to increase the strength of the turbulence to 0.75 and then increase our domain's resolution divisions to our target of 256 and then lower our frame range to just 150 so I can get a quick look at the beginning of the sim and see if I like where it's going before committing to a longer bake. Then bake the noise and when it's finished play it back in the viewport and see if you like it. When you're happy, free the noise and the data, and then increase the frame range to the desired length for your whole smoke animation, and then prepare for a relatively long bake. When it's done with the data, bake the noise, and again, it's probably going to be a pretty long bake time depending on your PC. Most likely during this part of the baking, probably just going to go to bed and then check it in the morning, or leave for the day and then check it when you come home. If you watch the process initially, you might get a false impression that it's going to be quicker than you think. But as the sim progresses and more and more smoke is generated in the scene, the bake will slow down and take longer to calculate the data for each frame. During this time, it'll be really important to be patient and mentally prepare yourself for the possibility that you might not like the result and you might have to do this again. That's okay. Only the strong survive when it comes to smoke sims. Now if you want some motion blur on your spinning tires, be sure to go to the view layers tab and check the box for a vector pass. Then in the compositor, you will see that the renders layer node now has a vector output. You can add a vector blur node and then plug that vector output into the vector blur node speed input. Then plug your denoised image into the vector blur node's image input. Adjusting the blur value will allow you to achieve just the right amount of motion blur without having it hard rendered into your image ahead of time. This gives you more flexibility and control than using Cycle's motion blur. The lens distortion node is used just to add a touch of chromatic aberration with a very small number in the dispersion value, like 0.007. Those two things, lens distortion and vector blur, should help give you a pretty realistic image for both stills and animations. And that, my friends, is about it. Just remember not to change more than one thing at a time as you iterate on your sim. Let me know in the comments below how this works out for you or if you have any questions and I'll do my best to help. With some patience and some experimentation, you will soon be a master of smoke sims and burnout animations. Of course, you know you can do much more than what I've shown you here today, but I hope this takes some of the sting out of the early parts of the process and lays a good foundation for you to build from. I'm sure whatever you're working on, it's going to look awesome if you keep at it. Never give up. Thanks very much for stopping by today, and good luck on your Blender journey.